ILL PowerPoint presentation for the year 2020. The subject DES PHE 31. Presenter Mrs. AC Stein. Good morning, I'm Mrs. Ansi Stein, your tutor for PHE 31 for this year. Welcome to the presentation for this subject. I hope you enjoy your studies and that you will successful, be successful this year. Success comes with dedicated, consistent work. My contact details are 081-277-5321, my cell phone number, and ansistein at hotmail.com, my email address. You're welcome to contact me from Mondays till Saturdays, from 8am till 8pm. You can either phone me or SMS or email me. In the latter case, I can send you a detailed answer. Please feel free to ask if anything is unclear or if you have problems regarding your subject. I'm willing to assist as far as I can. I'm going to discuss the most important facts of each unit separately. You will then be able to follow the content discussed if you page through your study guide while I'm discussing the content. Please note that this presentation is not a discussion of any exam paper, but of the most important content for the whole year. As an introduction to the study guide, I'm shortly going to explain some information regarding the guide itself. When you turn to the front of the study guide, you will find a detailed table of contents. Here you will find the headings of the complete content and you will be able to have an overview of your subject for the year. Take time to read through it, to familiarize yourself with the content you're going to study. On page 1 you will find very important information regarding the time you are required to spend with the subject in order to be a successful student. Because this is distant teaching, it is very important that you spend adequate time right throughout the year with your study material. To just start studying before the exams will not be wise and it will be hard to write the exams successfully. I recommend that you spend time every day with your studies. Even half an hour every day will be worthwhile. Consistency is the key to being a successful student. When you turn the page, you will find verbs thinking processes. These words form the key of the assignment and also the exam paper. For example, when you are requested to analyze facts, you have to present facts in detail. And when you have to outline, you have to only give an overview and present the main features. Make sure to know what is expected of you when these verbs are present in your assignment and exam paper. Also read through 9 and 10. When you turn to Unit 1, you firstly find the table of content this, of this unit and then the learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are an indication of what content you will find in the specific unit. Learning activities, in short LA, follow the learning outcomes. In, this learn, in these learning activities, you will find specific questions regarding the content of the specific unit. It will be wise to firstly try to answer these questions on your own and thereafter look at the answers which are at the end of each unit. When studying for the exams, use these questions to study because they form the core of the content and are very important. Do not forget to also study the assignment you completed because some of these questions will also be asked in the exams. So let us start with each unit separately now. Follow in your guide as I discuss the content. Unit 1. First of all, you need to understand what physiology is. It is a division of biology and to be more specific, it is the science how living organisms function, whereas anatomy is about the structure of the body, what the parts of the body look like, the shape and where the parts of the body and organs are located. This is set out in detail in 1.1. 1 
In 1.2.2, the body systems are discussed. Concentrate on the lymphatic, respiratory, endocrine, digestive, skeletal, and nervous systems. Know their functions. In 4.1, certain fists fitness terminology are defined. I'm only going to concentrate on a few which you should know by heart. Blood pressure is the amount of pressure or force of blood against the wall of the blood vessels. The core is a group of muscles made up of the abdominals, the lower backs, the obliques and the hips. Flexibility is the measure of range of motion and movement around a joint. An exercise in which the muscles exert force but not visibly change in length, for example when pushing against a wall, is called an isometric exercise. Also study aerobic exercises. Study BMI and low impact. In the last terminology to know, uh, uh, that is obesity. Obesity is a weight disorder, characteristic abnormal for someone's age, gender, height and body type. Currently, some secondary learners experience some health problems which occur internationally. For example, HIV, mental health, like depression, which is a health problem of the mind, early pregnancy, alcohol and drug abuse, and also malnutrition. There are quite a few more, so study 1.6 in this regard. Know the problems, but also what each problem is about. In 1.10, the very important topic, namely how to coach, uh, how a coach can develop teamwork amongst members of a sports team, is discussed. It is important that the coach knows the players, in other words, know their strengths and also their weaknesses. He or she should also know how to communicate effectively to get the most out of the players. They should feel valued and listened to and problems should be addressed as soon as possible and effectively. There are more to this topic. Study to know them. The last topic of importance can be found in LA, that's Learning Activity 5, at the end of the unit but also in 1.12. How can one monitor your own fitness? By writing down and taking note of the following. The amount of time spent exercising, how much weight was lifted, the resting heart rate, and did you find the exercise hard or easy? This will help to establish improvements by challenging them to get more fit. Please take note that it's also important to study the assignment you completed. For example, in question 1.2, you had to fill in answers found in Unit 1. The integumentary body system consists of the skin, the hair and the nails. In 1.9, you read, that PTSD stands for post-traumatic stress disorder and the definition of the core can be found in 1.4. Study to know this. We are going to concentrate on Unit 2 now where the categories of fundamental movement skills are discussed in 2.1. Body management skills include twisting, rolling, etc. The second one is locomotor skills. They are, for example, hopping, skipping, jumping when you plan, for example, rugby or take part and in athletics. Object control skills are executed when netball or soccer is played because, because one has to throw, to kick and dribble.
Study 2.1 extensively to know and to understand these movement skills. 2.2 is important in the sense that the six motor de development components are named here. They are agility, balance, coordination, speed, which is the ability to move from one point in space to the next point in the shortest time. Also power, reaction time, and make sure to know these names. Phases of motor development are discussed in 2.3. The four important fa uh, phases are discussed in detail. The reflexive movement phase is the first one, starting at birth up to one year, where infants engage in reflexive and involuntary movements, meaning that they are not learned, but they come naturally like sucking, which is a survival mechanism for newborn babies. The second phase is the rudimentary movement phase and it includes actions like reaching for objects and sitting, standing and walking. These skills are developed from zero to two years of age. The third phase is the fundamental phase and it occurs from two to about seven years of age. Children gain increased skills during this phase by refining skills like running and throwing. The last phase is the specialized movement phase, which begins at about seven years of age up to adulthood. The skills are now more accurate and focused. You should be able to know the phases' names, the ages related to them, and also an example of the behavior of each phase. Study these in detail as found in 2.3. You should be able to indicate why warm-up activities before a game are necessary. 2.4 will help you in this regard, so make sure to know 2.4. In 2.6, muscular strength activities and exercises are discussed. First of all, you should know what these exercises entail and you should also be able to give examples like yoga, heel walking, cycling and dance. In 2.7, flexibility exercises are discussed in detail. It is important to know that you as PE teacher can teach learners these exercises. Important to know is that stretching, yoga, tai chi and pilates are exercises which improve the flexibility of your learners. Know the names of these examples as set out in 2.7. In 2.13.1, it concentrates on coaching styles. There are three main styles, namely autocratic, where the coach makes all the decisions and is bossy. The democratic style, where shared decision-making takes place. And the laissez-faire style, where the coach makes few decisions and the learners take ownership and make the decisions. Decide for yourself in which kind of coaching style you would want to get involved and which one is the best, but study to know them in detail. We're going to page to Unit 3 now, where specific gymnastic exercises are described. A physical education teacher and coach should know exactly how these actions should be executed, otherwise children can hurt and it can be dangerous if done wrongly. In 3.2, the rock and roll, backward roll, is discussed. Rock from tuck sit position to back and return to tuck or squat position. Try to keep hands off the ground, remaining on your shins. With this description, Pictures are supplied to help you study this in detail. 
Another exercise to concentrate on can be found in 3.3. Bench cartwheels is a specialized exercise which should be done correctly. Study to know exactly how it should be done 100% correctly from the start up to the end. In 3.4, it is set out how to execute a correct head stand. It is very important that it should be done 100% correctly, so study this in detail. You should be able to describe the complete action from beginning to end. We use balances every day. Even when walking, we balance ourselves to do it correctly and effectively. There are quite a few types of gymnastic, balancing activities and exercises. Know their names and also what they entail as found in 3.6. The paragraph of importance in 3.7 is about gym class lock meaning how would you do rope climbing using this technique. Study it to be able to describe this technique 100%. In 3.8, rhythmic floor routines are discussed. This entails that exercises are done by gymnasts on the floor with or without music using rhythm to express themselves. To help with these exercises and to contribute to the aesthetic nature, certain apparatus are used like ropes, hoops, balls, clubs and ribbons. Acquaint yourself with this content. You must also be able to discuss what these rhythmic flow in, uh, activities entail. This content can be found in the first paragraph of 3.8 and study this extensively. Gymnastics can be done with professional equipment but also without them. Sometimes schools do not have this equipment and the PE teacher should then improvise to let learners do gymnastics without them. In 3.9 some ideas are set out in detail on how to be still able to practice gymnastics without any professional equipment like to make use of the floor space, to invest in a few key pieces like benches and wedges which are not that expensive. Even the wall can be used to practice handstands and some strengthening exercises. Study therefore 3.9 extensively in this regard. Now let's turn to Unit 4. Unit 4 is about training issues and the management of events. First of all, you should be able to identify which kind of actions speak of good and which of bad sportsmanship, as found in 4.20. What would you say? If a player questions the decisions of the referee during a soccer game, would that be good or bad sportsmanship? It would be bad sportsmanship because it can lead to chaos if each player questions the decisions made during a game. Can you think of an example of good sportsmanship? By congratulating the opponents after they won would be a good action. You should be able to name but also to identify good and bad sportsmanship. As a PE teacher, it can be expected from you to organize a school athletics or sport event. It is crucial to know what to organize and take care of before such an event in order to make it successful. There are quite a few things to take care of. For example, who is the event for? When is it going to be held? Where is it going to be held? Who will participate? Who will help with the event? Finances, etc. So study 4.22 in detail to know how to organize and execute a successful sport event. Are you able to explain how sport builds character? Character is defined as the way we think, feel and behave. Now sport contributes to the character of the learners by improving their physical endurance, their moral habits, for example not, ta uh, for example, not taking bribes, their goal setting, their planning of time, 
their concentration and confidence. These are the characteristics of a sport person and they need to be developed. Make sure to study 4.1 in detail to be able to discuss and analyze this topic. 4.9 is important to study because exercises for a hurdle runner are discussed here. Also important is to know how butt kicks should be ex executed correctly. Learners can do butt kicks for 15 to 20 seconds uh, when they, their backs should be kept straight, bringing the heels towards the buttocks and the exercise should be done with speed. Make sure to study this exercise well. Also 4.15 contains exercises but for a long jumper. Study this topic too in detail to be able to discuss them correctly. In 4.16 you only need to know the names of exercises which a shot put athlete should do in order to improve in this division. They are push press, plyometric push-ups, high pulls, box jumps, medicine ball chest pass throw. USPE teacher can be expected to coach some sport teams. It is not every person who can do this successfully, as you well know. A coach therefore has to have certain qualities in order to coach a team with success. Can you think of a few qualities? A coach should be able to communicate effectively, to have technical knowledge of the sport code, to cater for all the individuals he or she coaches. These are but a few. You will find a detailed description in 4.21, which you should be able to know and discuss. The important content of Unit 5 can be found in 5.2, 5.3, 5.7, 5.8, 5.11, 5 and 5.12. In 5.2 it is described how to catch a cricket ball successfully. Concentrate on the high catch cricket ball. Study this technique extensively. In 5.3 the rules of cricket are set out. There are quite a few, a few rules, so I'm only going to discuss a few. You can find them all in 5.3. Two teams, teams take part, each made up of 11 players. There is a reserve player called a 12th man. Umpires apply the law and make sure the rules are upheld right through the game. Two umpires are in place. If they are unsure about a decision, they refer it to the third umpire who reviews slow motion video replays to make a decision. These are only a few rules. Also study the content of game structure for more rules. Make sure to know at least 10 cricket rules by heart. In 5.7 the procedure on how to execute a basic pass of a rugby ball during a rugby game is discussed. You have to run straight, hold the ball with both hands, look at the receiver of the ball, pass at chest height in front of the receiver. Be sure to pa uh, the pass is made laterally, meaning sideways or backways, backwards. Complete the pass and follow through by pointing hands at the receiver. There are steps two and three also. Study them also. Now a study tip will be an easy way to study techniques I think is to actually do the action yourself while you talk it through. In that way you know how it actually should be done and you've done that yourself which makes it more familiar. This implies all the sport actions and even the different uh, sport rules. To watch the sport games on television can also help to know and understand the rules of the different sport codes. 5.811 discusses the netball rules. There are quite a few subheadings regarding the rules. Study to know them well. Very important to know are the playing positions of a netball team as set out in 5.8.1. 
5.11 is also of importance because safety is of great importance when a PE teacher uh, presents a lesson. Certain safety measures should be in place. For example, the teacher should know any physical disability of each learner. The space should be ample for the activity presented. Clothing and footwear should be appropriate, etc. Make sure also to be able to set up rules for your learners to let them play safely. For example, do not play with glass bottles, do not run with sharp objects in your hands, etc. Study therefore this topic well. In 5.12, first aid procedures are discussed. When treating an injury, it is essential to follow the RISA method, meaning R stands for rest, I for ice, C for compression, E for elevate, R for referral. These are the key words for what each letter of RISA means. But you should also know what key, each key word implies. In short, R, rest, implies the in, uh, injured person should be kept still to avoid further injury. I, the ICE, stands for applying a cold pack to the injury for 20 minutes every two hours. C, compression, apply a compression bandage covering not just the injured area but the areas above and below too. E, elevate, elevate meaning lift to a higher position, the injured area to stop bleeding and swelling. R, referral, refer the injured per person to a professional like a doctor for a precise diagnosis. You should be able to know the name of the method, what each letter stands for, but also what each word entails. So make sure to study this in depth to know it by heart. Also important in 5.12 is how to do rescue breaths. Read it and study rescue breaths in 5.12. Again, a study tip will be to practice this on your own so that you actually experience the complete procedure. Also very important discussed in 5.12 is what a PE teacher will have to do when a child gets injured. Study the uh, first two paragraphs of 5.12 in order to know the procedure. One point would be that the teacher should know the procedures of the specific school. Make sure to let the parent or guardian know about it and record the incident. There are more. Study these two paragraphs. Unit 6. Unit 6 is about games to develop fitness and skill. First of all, you need to know what games are for small groups, 6.3, for large groups, 6.2, for pairs, 6.1, and tag and dodging games found in 6.4. You need not know how to execute all these kinds of games, but you should know the names of these games and you must also be able to identify them. For example, if I mention soccer, you should know that it is a game for large groups. Tennis is a game for pairs. The game end ball is a game played by small groups of people. So study all the names of all the games mentioned in 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, and 6.4. 6.5 describes how team relays and races should be played. At this stage, however, you only need to know the six names of these relays and races. While presenting PE, a teacher can teach the learners traditional African games, and in this way, they learn each other's culture and it improves peer relations. I'm only going to concentrate on one for now, namely Skululu, as found in 6.6. .6. Play the game yourself in order to be able to know and describe it completely. Remember that you should be able to describe this, uh, the game with 100% precision, otherwise it will have no purpose and will be played wrongly. A very important topic is how a PE teacher will maintain order without spoiling the more relaxed environment and enjoyment.
A PE class is not as disciplined as, for instance, a maths class and can quickly turn into chaos if not managed correctly. Can you think of ideas? Try to answer them on your own before paging to the study guide. Tips on how to do this are discussed thoroughly in 6.9. Make sure to know these tips. When we turn to Unit 7, 7.2, 7.3, 7.5 and 7.6 are important. Not all people can move to rhythm naturally, so you as PE teacher can use ways to practice learners to keep to rhythm. In 7.2, it is stated that not only a, is stomp a successful show, but a fun way to introduce learners to dance. The simple instructions to help you with that can be set out using this key. C for clap, S for stomp, a tune or song with a fast tempo and a heavy beat. SW for swish, brush hands back and forth on thighs. And F for finger clicks. S for sidestep. So how will, you, this, uh, how will this key help you teach learners a rhythmic pattern? Practice the five actions of the key above with them and then they can combine them and create their own routine. Know the key, however, by heart to help you with this, as set out in 7.2. Again, do these actions yourself in order to understand and know them. Not all people can move to rhythm easily, but it can be learned what are these elements and how they can they be taught. The first one will be bob your head. You can use a drum with a steady beat to move the head according to rhythm, counting one, two, three and four in your head. Second one will be to shift your weight. Three, move your feet. Read and understand what this move entails. Four, Add some hip action. Five, get your arms moving. Six, style. I only mention the headings to follow to help you with the learning rhythm. Study all the headings, but also know what each one entails as found in 7.3. To dance with style has many benefits. In fact, the benefits of dancing with style are set out in 7.5, like uh, it keeps your body and brain active, it improves strength and flexibility, it improves body posture, etc. Study all 10 of them, but you should also be able to shortly discuss each benefit and skill. Loud noises can have a negative impact on human beings. It has an impact on our health. It causes stress reactions. It has an impact on people's performance at home, at school or at work. It causes weight loss and mental and physical stress. It keeps us from having a deep sleep at night, so the body cannot relax and repair itself. It even has an impact on our immune systems. Study all these negative influences of too loud sounds as set out in 7.6. The last unit, Unit 8, also has quite important content. First of all, in 8.2 there is a table containing explanations about the systems, organs, tissues, cells and chemicals of the body. Study to know what each one of these entail. For example, organs are a group of tissues precisely arranged so that they can work together. And cells are the smallest living unit in the body. Study to know them all. To be unhealthy and unfit has many consequences which are set out in 8.4. Study them extensively. It is part of a PE teacher's job to teach children the importance of personal hygiene. Personal hygiene involves the hygiene of the whole body, the hair, the hands, to wash every day, to brush teeth twice a day, to wash the feet very well every day, etc. Have you ever thought why and how you will teach learners the importance of personal hygiene? 
Let your thoughts go on this topic because it is such an important part of life and should be taught to learners. 8.5 will help you with this. It's very important to eat a well-balanced diet. What does it entail? To cut down on sugar and saturated fats, to drink plenty of water, to at least eat two portions of fish, fish per week, etc. Study 8.8.1 to know all the detail in this regard. The last paragraph of interest is the very important subject of drugs and the harmful effects it has on unit, humans. Cocaine, ecstasy and marijuana are discussed in 8.9.1. Make sure to know these effects by heart so that you will be able to discuss them. Now this concludes my discussion regarding the most important facts in your study guide. As mentioned previously, make it your priority to study right throughout the year. Look at the learning outcomes and also the learning activities. And remember that when answering a question, facts from different parts of the study guide can be applicable. It's not necessarily limited to one part of the study guide. And important, know certain facts about the subject as well as the correct procedures regarding the presentation of PHE. I stress this because some students are of the opinion that this subject does not need to be studied for and then they do poorly in the exams. Take time to know your study guide in order to present adequate facts during the exams. Lastly, please note that short answer questions will be asked in, and the following can be asked like filling in missing words, like Possible answers can also be given and then you have to choose the correct answer and fill it in the space. Definitions can be asked, for example, of strength. Strength is the ability of the body to exert a maximum force against a force external to the body. Another type of short question is where two columns are given. Column A, for example, is exercise beneficial for a shot put athlete. Two is for sp is speed, three is chocolates and sweets. And then in column B, there are explanations. A is not a healthy option to eat. B is lunges. C is the ability to move from one place to another in the shortest time possible. Now you have to combine the correct answers by only filling in the correct number and letter. In this case, one B is the correct answer to C and 3A. You only fill in the correct letters. Do not write out the words. Now please feel free to contact me regarding any uncertainties and questions you have about your subject. Good luck with the exams. You will be rewarded for hard work and dedication.